Wow. Okay. This is my more free form style speech. So I'm going to be going over my top 13 Netflix shows um, that I just really love. And these are the ones that I fully made it all the way through. Um, so yeah, these are the ones that I really like. And then I just put them into an order. So hope you enjoy. So first off, we have the Santa Clarita diet. I can put my face in over here. This one was sort of weird. It was about zombies. She becomes a zombie, but it's also a comedy show. So it has great moments. It kind of has some gross moments, which can be kind of yuck. But overall, the main two leads are super good. So overall, that's a pretty good one. I'd say it's like mid-tier. I wouldn't say you have to watch it, but if you watch it, you'll enjoy it. So. I liked it. The next one we have is End of the Effing World. So this one for me is a bit of a step up, like a decent bit of a step up. This is kind of similar in the fact that it has comedy within it, but it also has some gross moments. Um, it's very dry, like witty, like kind of British humor. Um, but I don't know, I really liked it. So. I think it can, some people really like it and some people really not like it. So if you watch like the first episode and you really enjoy it, I'm sure you'll enjoy the rest. Um, again, the main two are pretty good. I think maybe even less good than last one, but overall the story is more compelling. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I like this one a little bit better. And then the next one we have Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. So this is another comedy. This is way more of a comedy than the last two. And this one is just straight funny. And I really like it. Uh, the main actress who plays Aaron Hannon on The Office, um, she's super great and super convincing um, as a, a woman who has been in, trapped in a hole for like 10 years and then finally comes out and has to live with um, the new world. She's super convincing in that. Um, and honestly, for me, the main star is Titus in the show and he's super, super funny. Um, so yeah, I, I that, this is a recommend. I, I think from here on out, these are all be shows that I recommend. Um, you just go check out because this is an awesome one. Um, and yeah, I mean, each episode is not super linear. You don't, it doesn't matter as much, but, um, each one is super funny. And I wish that they made more, but they kind of seem like they're done. Um, but yeah, it's written by Tina Fey. She has a couple of appearances, but anything written by Tina Fey is going to be pretty funny. So I'm a big fan. Next, we have The Queen's Gambit. So the other ones have been comedies, and this one is not a comedy. It's a, ch chess about, it's a show about chess. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I am always a huge chess fan. So this was kind of the right show for me. There was a lot about when it, it the, the strongest parts were when it was around surrounding chess. And then the weaker parts for me, when, when it was discussing like her alcohol addiction and um, just the stuff that she did outside the tournaments, which is important, but I don't know. That is less engaging for me at least than uh, the actual chess parts. So. I think the main actress was super good. I liked her a lot. She was pretty quiet, so it wasn't like a super, super memorable role, but it's just a good show. So I'd recommend this one as well. And then we have Big Mouth. The other, maybe not Kimmy Schmidt, but the other um, three have all been sort of adult shows. This is more of a teenage humor show, um, and I love it, honestly. Um, a lot of my friends don't really like it. They think it's just too crude. Um, but when it first came out, uh, it's, it was one of my favorite shows. Um, Nick Kroll is super funny in it. Um, and honestly, the, the best characters aren't even on this poster. The hormone monsters are, they just, they honestly steal the show. Jordan Peele does an amazing job. So that whole show to me is super funny and I understand if people would say it gets old and it gets tiring and it's a lot of fart wiener jokes. I get that, but 
I'm always good for a fart or wiener joke, so I like that. Uh, next, we have Black Mirror. So Black Mirror is if you want a show to make you think, this is probably the best show that there is on Netflix because this, uh, besides maybe the last season was not so good, it consistently gives you sh episodes that you will think about and will make you think and be like, what the heck did I just watch? The whole thing about Black Mirror is that at the end of the episode, it'll just go black. Um, and it's like a black mirror. So you can look onto yourself and be like, what the heck did I just watch? And look at yourself with your reaction. Like, geez, what the heck was that? So uh, the writing is great. The stories are awesome and super creative. Um, but for me, sometimes the darkness can just not make it something I always want to watch because especially during COVID times, life is hard as it is. So it can be a downer sometimes. So if you want something to make you think or watch with friends, honestly, Black Mirror is awesome, but yeah, I don't know. There's other shows that will just make me want to watch it every single time. And Black Mirror is not really one of them. I kind of watched an episode and then I'm, I'm good for a little while at least. The next one is Ozark. This is a pretty similar show except it's honestly just a step up um, for me because Jason Bateman is awesome um, in the show. He's super good. The woman from the Truman Show, the wife is also in the show and she's super cool. She's good. Um, and instead of, it, it is a darker show and there's some violence, um, but overall it's a show about family, which is all that I really love. Um, so this is actually one of the ones that I didn't make it all the way through. Uh, just because I got interested in another show, but the show, the episodes that I watched were super good. So I like this show. My brother's a big fan of the show. Um, and this is one I would recommend. It's, oh, it can be a little bit hard to get into. Um, but I don't know. The suspense is awesome. The mysteries are awesome. Um, you really feel the danger that they're in. Um, and you feel like you're along the ride with them. So I love the show. Um, the next one is sex education. It's kind of a weird pattern here. There's either pretty dark shows or pretty light shows. This is a lighter show. Um, yeah, it's kind of all the way over to the light, to light side. Um, it's just a fun, it's kind of like big mouth. It's just silly. Um, the main characters are super likable and probably a lot more likable than big mouth. Um, this one, my mom watches sometimes, but she'd never watched the other one. So I, this is just an, for me, it's an awesome show. Um, and I don't know, I, I love it. It kind of serves a similar purpose to big mouth to make people feel more comfortable about their things that they just don't talk about as much. Um, but this is maybe like, this is a high schooler one. And the other one is, um, a little bit younger. Um, so you root for the characters. It's just a, a show that you can watch and just know you're gonna have a good time watching. Um, and it's made me feel more comfortable about stuff that I don't talk about as much, so. Uh, next is one of the, we're nearing the end here. These are top tier shows for me, The Umbrella Academy. I love this show. I'm a big fan of superheroes. I love Marvel, I love DC. So a whole family of superheroes. Um, it's just, it's awesome. Um, the stars of this one, um, I don't remember his name, but the actor who plays, uh, number five, um, the youngest, he does a great job. He's supposed to be older and he plays, he's like, plays an older kid in a older man and like stuck in a younger's body. Um, so he does an amazing job and all the actors here are just super likable. Klaus is also another one that stands out. Um, the dynamics between the family is awesome. So I just overall, I really like this show. Um, and they do a good job leaving you in suspense, um, building up characters and the shooting of cinematography of the whole show is just really awesome. So the special effects are also super good. So this is a top one for me. This is one, I think this is top three. Um, 
This one, one, two, three, five, actually. Okay, this is top five. Um, this is the fifth one on my list. Um, I love this show, honestly. Um, it stars one of the YouTubers that I've loved for a long time. Um, Life of Life According to Jimmy, um, Jimmy Tatro. And it's just another one of the sillier ones. Um, it's a mockumentary of like a mystery of who drew uh, spray painted like penises on um, like a car or something. Um, I haven't watched it in a while, but I just remember loving the show. And it's one that me and my friends talked about all the time. So this is just a fun, it's a good mystery, honestly. It still is like a, they do a good job of making it like a real mockumentary. So I love this show. Um, and I would recommend to anyone who can get past the silliness of it just being who drew the penises on the side of like a car. Um, so I love the show. So number four is you. And this is like a blend of a creepy show, but also a show that I will watch anytime because the main actor who plays Joe on the show is just so charismatic and it's weird that you root for him and you root for him hard. Um, each season, um, there's two seasons of the show now. He's just amazing in it. Um, season one had good characters and season two honestly stepped it up like even an, another notch. Um, yeah, Jenny Ortega is really good. Um, there's just a lot of good characters in uh, season two. So everything, it, it was amazing season one. And I'd honestly argue that season two is even better. So I'm excited for where they take it in season three. Um, but yeah, it's a show about a man who, I don't know, actually know if I want to spoil it, but it's, it's an awesome show. He's a bit of a creep, um, a bit maybe an understatement. Um, but yeah, he just, the way he goes about things and the way he makes you think about why the heck am I rooting for this guy and how he, movies can just portray someone um, who from an outside perspective is an awful, awful person. But it, when it's their own perspective, you think, hey, he's not so bad of a guy. So this is a top show for me. And this is bringing us into the top three, Cobra Kai. Um, people love the show for a bunch of different reasons. Some people love it because they've watched all the Karate Kid movies and then they just like a follow-up, which is awesome. Um, I've personally only watched the first Karate Kid movie, um, which I really liked when I was younger. Um, I never really gotten around to watching the second and third. Um, but regardless of if you watch the first ones or not, you, if you kind of know the story, it does, honestly does a good job of telling you it. Um, it's just a really cool and heartwarming and lifting, like uplifting story um, from the villain's perspective of the Karate Kid. So it's from Johnny's perspective. And the acting can be a little bit cringy sometimes, but overall, I love it so much. Um, the season came out not too long ago, the newest season. It was awesome. The fight scenes are really cool. Um, yeah, what's better than some good old karate? So I don't know. Different, you get super attached with different characters. They have really good character transformations, um, especially the kids who are sort of bullied at the beginning and become nerds um, or who are nerds become cooler and become more, sometimes more aggressive with the different fighting styles that Johnny Lawrence and um, Daniel LaRusso bring to the table. Um, they become dojo masters themselves and teach these younger kids, the, like the younger generation. So it's a cool concept and they execute it really well. So I like it a lot. And this is number two on my list, Money Heist. This is kind of all of the Ozarks and the Black Mirrors and the end of the effing world but to the highest tier. This is a show that I watched in Spanish, actually. Um, it's called La Casa de Papel. Um, and you can watch in English, but I honestly would recommend you watch it in Spanish just because for me, at least, I like watching where their like, mouths line up. Um, and if you put on subtitles, especially I take Spanish, it's not too bad. Um, but this is just 
peak TV for me. Um, it's exciting. It's action packed. It's suspenseful. You don't know who's going to do what. The whole escape scenes are super clever. Like it's like Ocean Eleven, but in a show, and you get more delve into the characters more. Um, and it's there's more consequences um, in this show. So they're on season three, I think, and there's one more season coming. Or no, they just finished season four, and there's one more season coming. So. I really can't wait for it. Um, yeah, it's just an awesome show. So this is one I would definitely recommend. Um, it'll really get you thinking about what you might have done or something, um, or where you would lie if you were on the side of the public and you were hearing about these things. Um, so it's a bunch of charismatic characters that you really grow a bond with. So they do an awesome job and I love this show. So can't say it enough. And my number one show, a little drum roll, Stranger Things. Um, if you've watched this show, it's really no surprise that this is one of a top show for anyone who making a Netflix tier list. Um, the characters on this are just so amazing. And yes, it's about like other like worlds and um, dimensions and scary stuff. If you can get past the scariness of the Demogorgons and the, just like the monsters. There's so much friendship and unity and connection between the characters that you really grow to love each one. And I don't know, there's just, they do such an amazing job of making sure you care about these characters and understand the bond. And the bond is super believable between these friends. Um, and yeah, you care about them a lot. Every single actor is great. Um, Millie Bobby Brown, Noah Schnapp, um, the other ones, I can't even remember the names, but there's, uh, Mike, uh, Finn Wolfhard, um, they're awesome. And they, you, sometimes child actors can be a little rough, um, and they, I don't know, they just carry the show, honestly. It's kind of the other way around. They are the best parts of the show, um, and it's no surprise why it's so popular. So... That was my ranking of the Netflix shows. I can go all the way back. Starts with Santa Clarita Diet. Good show, little weird. Woman becomes a zombie. Kind of cool, um, like a fantasy thing. End of the effing world, good show. It has suspense, mystery, um, dry humor, really good. Kimmy Schmidt, comedy, also super good. Queen's Gambit. Chess, love it. Big mouth. Teens going through their issues. We have a kid. Could be fun to watch with them. Could be uncomfortable. I don't know. Kids will like this one. Black Mirror makes you think. Ozark makes you worried. Sex Ed makes you laugh. Umbrella Academy makes you pump your fist in the air. Support them. American Vandal makes you go, what the heck? Because this show is just silly as heck. Um, you makes you why, why the heck do I like this guy so much? It's, there's no reason I should be Cobra Kai. Awesome fighting character development really hones in on these people, money heist action and suspense and stranger things just bond between characters. So that's my list. Um, that was my free point speech. I can't wait to hear back. So I'll see you in a bit.